the movie takes place over one night, and it's from the point of view of the actors uh, holding a video camera. I wanted the feeling that any one of the viewers, had they been in the midst of this, could have made this movie. This is real reality TV, just some guy with a video camera. Look at that, huh? It felt like the ubiquity of, of videotape and, and, and people, you know, documenting their lives, whether it's on, you know, their cell phones or video cameras, it's so prevalent that it's more kind of in the vernacular now than ever. So the whole sort of editing and shooting style was to make it both seem like it wasn't a movie and like there was no manipulation going on at all that you would see in a normal movie where things would be laid out for you in a traditional manner. A lot of attention was given to try and get shots and put shots together in a way that really felt naturalistic. That was the most important thing that we did. When JJ and Drew and I were talking, we were saying, you know, one of the things that's gonna help us out here is we'll be able to do jump cuts at an moment, almost any moment, because you don't have to explain why or how the camera was turning on and off. And we do that a lot in the film, but one of the things that I thought was really important was that I felt that if I were in the midst of some moment and I hadn't shut off the camera accidentally, that if something were going on that was important enough to be documenting, I wouldn't be cutting at all. And that immediately upped the ante in terms of how we were going to do certain things. I got a call saying, We'd like you to do it. And that's when I sort of gotten, I got a little scared. Since everything is like a winner and we have to do everything in, in kind of one take. A winner is when you do a complete scene in one take, in one pass, with no interruptions and no cuts. This movie basically being, I mean, it's a giant monster movie, action movie. You live and die by the pace of these films. We had to figure out ways to get to multiple takes in a sequence and still have the perception of one shot. When you're watching the film, everything appears to be a winner. We've done that creatively with hiding the cuts and making the appearance of a winner happen. Because of the way Matt shot it, it gave us more opportunities to sort of manipulate the pace and hide the cuts that way. I would almost say that we design a certain choreography for the shots. We would swish off onto something and then the next shot that was married to, we'd swish back in. As long as the same speed and nothing really changes abruptly, like, you know, a highlight or whatever in the shot, you can't tell there was a cut made. It was just a matter of putting it together in a seamless way. Basically finding points within the film where we can cut two pieces of it together that look almost, if not identical, so that as a, as a viewer, you don't see any of that happen. It all flows together smoothly. What are you doing? We gotta get out of here. Where is he? No, that's what I've been telling you. I've been trying to do that. This is... In a handful of instances, we resorted to visual effects where we literally morphed. It's like in a head turn or something. They would morph to the other take. And I do. When you do cuts, a lot of times there's a kind of release. Now we're onto something else. It's like a rhythmic shift. But when you keep something going and going and going, the tension has the potential to build and build and build and build and build. A good example of that is a sequence we call a crossfire. The group is walking. They're trying to get to Beth's building. It's when the military starts their offensive. About two minutes, I think, of screen time. There's about 16 or 17 cuts in it. it plays all as one shot. That's probably the sequence I'm the most proud of. I think for an editor, the challenge is in a way to sort of recede and let the story and let the camera sort of techniques take over and tell the story. So in a way, you want to be as invisible as possible. But you just feel like, oh, well, this, this is just unfolding. This is just happening. There was no editing there. It was always my thought that after the first five or six minutes of this film that you would just embrace this concept and the audience hopefully just sort of stops thinking about it. This is the concept. This is how the story is going to be told. Now we're just into the story.